Hey Credit Warriors, welcome to the show and in this video I want to take a look at which cards you should get for your first five credit cards as a beginner in the credit card game in 2023. Now by credit card game I mean using credit cards to collect either cash back on your spending to buy things that you want to get or to collect points that you can then later use for luxury vacations. Points tend to have greatest value when used for travel. And that's what we are all about on this channel, how to get value out of your spending on credit cards for amazing rewards. If you like the sound of that, why not subscribe? Otherwise, let's get going with our first card. Number one, Discover It Cashback Card. The Discover It Cashback Card still offers the best value for a complete beginner with no credit history. Since unlike other cards that beginners can get approved for, the Discover It Cashback Card actually earns some reward on your spending in the form of cashback. Many other beginner cards, such as the Capital One Platinum, for example, don't earn any rewards whatsoever. Now, the Discover It Cashback card is what we call a rotating quarterly category card. It earns 5% cashback on $1,500 worth of spending in categories that change every quarter. So for the current quarter, it is grocery, drugstores, and streaming services, and they announce the next quarter's category on the first of the month preceding that quarter. So for quarter two of 2023, there'll be a announcing it on March 1st. And then the card also earns 1% cash back on all other spending categories. Then there's also a welcome bonus, which is really convenient for beginners or people with low spending, since it doesn't require that you spend a lot of money in say the first three months of card membership. What they do instead is a cash back match. So that 5% actually gets doubled to 10% in the first year and the 1% on everything else, uh, that would be 2% in the first year. So for example, if you max out all of the categories, you spend 1500 each quarter, instead of earning $300 cash back for the year, you earn $600 because it's all doubled. Anyway, it's a really easy card to get approved for since Discover purposefully targets people with thin credit files. So it is a credit builder card. In addition to that, it has no annual fee and it also has no foreign transaction fees which is really unusual for a card in this tier. All right, let's move on to our next one. Number two, the Amex Blue Cash Everyday Card. Now this is a new one to my beginner list and that is because Amex made some updates to this card in 2022 and also for most of Amex's credit cards, it's now a no risk application, i.e. there is no hard pull on your credit score when you apply. It's only if Amex approves you and then you actually accept that offer that there may be a hard pull on your credit report. Now, hard credit pull generally drops your credit score by about three points. Yes, it's only three points, but still you don't want to waste hard pulls on credit card applications that you get denied for, especially when you have a low credit score at the beginning. Now, why do I say this card is good for a second card for a beginner? Well, that is because you can get approved with a credit score generally of about 670 and above. That's what it says in the approval odds on the review of this card on Bankrate. Now, if you get the Discover It card and you keep that for a few months and then maybe do some other things like reporting utility bills to your credit score using Experian Boost, that can give you a little boost, hence the name, and then maybe you can report rent payments with Rent Reporter, a few other things like that, you should be able to build your credit score to 670 within a few months and then you'll easily be able to get approved for this card. The card has a $250 welcome bonus, which is not bad for a no annual fee card. You do have to spend $2,000 to get that bonus though, but it is in six months, not the usual three months. So it's $333.33 recurring. Let's just round it up to $334. $334 per month you need to spend to get the bonus. I suspect most people will probably spend a bit more than that and get the bonus in quicker time. But I also think the cashback categories on this card are really suited to beginners or people who are not big spenders. They're just spending in everyday household categories and they're not big on travel. You have 3% cash back on groceries, 3% cash back on online shopping, and 3% on gas. Each category is limited to $6,000 per year, and then it goes down to 1%, and it's also 1% on everything else. I think most people will max out the grocery category because most people spend quite a bit of money on groceries, especially now with inflation, and it's only $500 a month you need to spend out the $6,000 uh, maximum spend allowance. I think the other two would be harder to max out, but if you do max out all three, that's $540 per year in cashback that you would earn. Another really cool thing is that this card gives you a $7 per month, which is $84 per year, 
credit for the Disney bundle, which is Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN. And it costs $12.99 a month for the cheapest plan. So you're basically getting the Disney bundle, three streaming services for less than half price. And I think that's really great value considering the card has no annual fee. You're basically being paid $84 to have this card. So with the ease of application, the cashback categories, and the $84 credit, I would say that this is a great choice for a beginner. With Amex as well, they tend to give higher credit limits. So this will help you build that credit score and credit report. And also with American Express, you can generally triple your credit limit if you apply for a credit limit increase after you've had the card open for 60 days. I have another video on my channel, looks like this, that tells you exactly how to do this. Uh, you can check it out after watching through this one. I'll also put it on the end card of this video. All right, let's move on to number three. But first of all, if you have several credit cards and you are looking for an easy way to organize data from all your cards in one place, look no further than the sponsor of today's video, Max Rewards. It is a smartphone app that pools data from all of your cards, even if they're from different issuers, into one easy to use dashboard. So you've got your transactions, your balances, your points and miles or cashback balances, all in one place. It'll also tell you which card from your wallet will earn the maximum rate of cash back or rewards in all of the popular spending categories. If you get the pro version of Max Rewards, Max Rewards Gold, it'll automatically activate all your American Express offers for you and add them to your card so that you never miss a deal. You can also search through the app for what offers are added to your card and you can find some little gems that you never knew you had, like this one for spend $50, get $50 back with the in-kind dining platform. And you can get a free month of Max Rewards gold with my link in the description below or you can just download it and check out the free features number three chase freedom now once you have a year of credit history it's time to get on the bandwagon with chase alternatively if you already bank with chase and have money coming into your account each month it's pretty easy to convince a chase banker to recommend you to the credit card department for a credit card. But in general, Chase don't do credit builder cards and they like to see a year of credit history. The reason we wanna start getting Chase cards as early as possible is that once you've opened five or more personal credit cards in a 24 month period, that's two years, Chase will not approve you for any new Chase cards. And the reason I recommend the Freedom cards, and you can choose between the Freedom Flex and the Freedom Unlimited, is that they have a great welcome bonus right now. It's $200 for spending $500 in three months, plus 5% back on grocery spending, up to $12,000 in spend per year. That's $800 cash back if you get the 200 and then max out the grocery spending. Now, if you're just starting out on this journey now, and you get the Discover It, and then you get the Amex Blue Cash every day, and then in a year's time, you wanna get the Chase Freedom, I'm not sure whether the same bonus will be running then. However, they have been running similar bonuses, kind of alternating back and forth between a similar thing with gas and grocery for the past year or more. The Chase Freedom Flex is kind of similar to the Discover It card in that it offers 5% cash back on rotating quarterly categories and the Chase Freedom Unlimited gives you 1.5% cash back on everything. Both cards then offer additional categories of 3% back on dining and at drugstores and 5% back on travel booked through Chase. It's also worth mentioning that this cashback is convertible to Chase Ultimate Rewards points where it can then take on more value if you transfer it to another Chase card, like our next one. Number four, Chase Sapphire Prefer. So this is another Chase card and having the Chase Freedom and then now a Chase Sapphire gives you two parts of the famous Chase Trifecta. It's a system where you have three Chase credit cards and you earn points on two of the cards and you then transfer them over onto the third card and that third card gives you greater value on the points when booking travel through the travel portal and it also lets you transfer the points out to airline partners where you can get even more value still. I have another video where I go through the whole Chase trifecta in detail. It looks like this. I'll put it on the end card of this video if you wanna check it out. But anyway, having a freedom and a sapphire gives you the two most important parts of the trifecta. Now the Chase Sapphire Preferred does have a $95 annual fee. So it's actually the first card on this list with an annual fee but it does have a 60,000 point welcome bonus for spending $4,000 in the first three months. That could be worth up to $750 if you use it to book travel 
through the Chase Travel Portal because the points are worth more on this card. Or if you transfer it out to airline partners and book business class, it could probably be worth about $1,200. So it's our first really big bonus on this list. So the reason why this card is so useful is that the points are worth 1.25 cents per point when you book travel through the travel portal. That's how you got the $750 in value for 60,000 points that we just talked about. And you can transfer points between Chase cards. So if you got the $800 welcome bonus on the Chase Freedom and you transfer it over to the Sapphire, it would end up being worth $1,000 if you used it to book flights or hotels through the Chase Travel Portal. If you combined the Freedom bonus and the Sapphire bonus, okay, 80,000 plus 60,000, that would give you 140,000 points, which would be worth $1,750 through the travel portal. Alternatively, if you transfer those points out to airline partners, most people get at least two cents per point in value, and thus it would end up being worth $2,800. Another cool feature of the Sapphire Preferred, because it's a travel credit card, it offers primary car rental insurance. So if you rent a car, paying with this card, you can decline the car rental company's insurance at the counter, and if you crash, you will be insured by your credit card and you don't even have to tell your own insurance company because coverage is primary. Anyway, the Sapphire Preferred, its main function in this system is for redeeming points at higher value. It does have a few other uses, has a few other bonus categories where you earn points as well. If you want to learn more about it, I will put a link to this card in the description it is a great card, so if you want to learn more, do click the link below. Now, in the future, if you wanted to, you could upgrade this card to the Sapphire Reserve, which further increases the value of your points to 1.5 cents per point, and it also gives you airport lounge access through Priority Pass, but it is for a much higher fee. So actually, personally, for your fifth card, I think you will be better off with our next one. Number five, the Capital One Venture X. Now this is what I would call a premium light credit card. It offers most of the benefits of other high level premium travel credit cards, but at a lower price. So it's way cheaper than the Amex Platinum and it's quite a lot cheaper than the Chase Sapphire Reserve too. So the Capital One Venture X has a $395 annual fee, but the card also gives you a $300 travel credit each year to be used on the Capital One travel portal where you can book flights, hotels, rental cars, etc. So if you use that credit, it effectively brings the annual fee down to just $95. But this is obviously for people who are actually going to do some travel. Um, otherwise, it just becomes an expensive waste of time because you're not going to get refunded that $300. And if you don't travel, you won't benefit from airport lounges anyway. The Venture X has a welcome bonus of 75,000 Capital One miles for spending $4,000 in the first three months. But the really cool thing is it gives you access to over 1,300 airport lounges for you and two guests, and that is through Priority Pass. But that's not the end of it. On top of that, the Capital One Venture X recently added Plaza Premium Lounges, which are really high quality lounges. I've been to several of them. I think they're great. And you have the new Capital One lounges opening up as well. So it really provides the best lounge access available for a reasonable price. And in my opinion, this would be a best first premium travel credit card for any beginner in the credit card game. So there you have it, guys. And if you do go through this entire system, you get the Discover It, the Amex Blue Cash Preferred, you get the Freedom, the Sapphire, the Venture X, and you transfer the bonus from the Freedom to the Sapphire, you would end up with $3,350 worth of bonuses. And that's just if you use the points from the cards that provide points through the travel portal. If you transfer it out to airlines, the value is going to be even higher. So let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. And what do you think a person's first five credit cards should be in 2023? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also check out the sponsor of today's video, Max Rewards, in the description below. Please subscribe if you're new for more credit card tips and tricks almost every day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.